it's me jc back with another ceramic hour live stream um i've been busy since i uh, canceled some of the streams last week uh, you can see i am working on some holiday ornaments to well i want to get them soon get them done as soon as i can to launch in november um before we start working on these i promised you guys a kiln reveal um <clears throat> so we've got a few things um <clears throat> if you've been following along for a little while you might know that we were working on some paint palettes but i've also got <clears throat> so i would say that uh so this one's a little bit more I feel like a watercolor paint palette it has deeper wells um, and then this one is not as deep and I don't know I kind of feel like it's a little bit more for the jewelry um, so it's kind of what I'm going off of although this one's like I don't know the the one with the deeper wells is also pretty nice for jewelry when I was taking some photos of it um, so that's kind of the distinction that I'm making with them. Obviously, like, people can use them for whatever they want. <laughs> but it, it was kind of, that was like my thought and like making this one not as deep. It definitely would not be super great for watercolor because there's really not a whole lot of depth there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've got these guys. Um, the glaze is, I don't know. I don't really know how I feel about it. I think I, I do like it, but I don't know. It, it's kind of dark when you, um, you know, you don't have it directly right in the light. It does look a little bit dark. Um... I don't know. I mean, it's not quite what I was imagining. I kind of like it. Um, this glaze is supposed to be a little bit more... I kind of feel like it's supposed to be a little bit more white-ish. And I don't know. We have like... I don't know if it's like optical mixing, but you can obviously see like the clay body coming through with that cream. We've got... I don't really know how much I can zoom in on this really but we've got a lot of like white speckles um kind of like near the edge of the wells um and then I don't know I feel like it kind of optically mixes and like has some pinks and purples sort of I don't know um not really sure how great it is to see on screen and then well here's this one again um this one's a lot lighter because it doesn't have like those shadows from the um from the wells so i feel like it looks i think i like how this one turned out maybe a little bit better color wise um hopefully it's not too distracting <laughs> for anybody that wants to use them for painting um <laughs> But yeah, that was kind of like my thought on this. And then we've got a little bit of glaze on this one. No glaze on the back there. And then <clears throat> we actually made two of these ones for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. I literally have no idea. There's like kind of like purple like spots in here. I don't know. I kind of think maybe something like when it was being loaded into the kiln, um, which I don't do. I take it to a studio. I kind of feel like like maybe like little bits like fell off of a piece and then like fell in here because it's super random. Like you don't see it at all really on this one. And then I don't know. I mean, maybe there's like really itty bitty ones i don't know i literally have no idea um but 
this kind of segues me into that custom piece that we made. It was a custom uh, watercolor paint palette. I mailed it, so um, I don't have a tissue on the stream. If you want to check it out, I just posted a picture today on my Instagram of what it looks like. Super fun. Um, and it's pretty different from like this shape. It has like very globby kind of uh, organic wells to it, but it is pretty different because it was a custom piece. Um, but that one was done with a new glossy white that I bought. I said, it's white. Do I really need to test it? Right? <laughs> so I didn't test it and then I put it on her piece and there are like brown, like very randomly, like brown bits, just like how this is very random, um, like embedded in the glaze, like just very randomly. And I'm like, did something fall into my pieces when they're being fired? I literally have no idea. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll just have to test that glaze some more. But I do think sometimes that happens because I have this piece. You can't see right now because I have like crap in here. <laughs> There's like <laughs> dried up clay. But like this piece got fired. It has these little black dots in there. It's like, what is that? Like that's not part of the glaze. And th actually this is the same glaze. Maybe, I don't know, maybe... <laughs> Maybe it's some maybe it's not the studio. Maybe it's like the where they're formulating the glaze. Maybe something like fell in. I don't know. But I'm like <laughs> I'm just like trying to solve this mystery. Um <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe it's the glaze. <laughs> uh wait, but the white glaze for the custom piece was different, so that really doesn't solve the whole thing. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> moving on. We've got this cute little cowboy boat. Um, <sighs> overall, I really like it, although we have some issues. Um, like down here, it's um, it's like bubbling. Don't know why it was bubbling. Um, but you can see I didn't really do a very good job of like, like we put like white over the black, but it's really not covering it. You can see the black that is like underneath it. So not super happy about that. And then the sides had some major issues. I don't know exactly why. I have suspicions. Um, maybe I'll try asking on Reddit, but maybe I can kind of show here. Um, it's really not quite focusing, but you can see like over here, like it looks like it like curled up onto itself. Um, I did put wax resist on this and I'm, I don't know, like... I'm not really sure what is the issue, but I have had this happen with some other wax resist pieces. You can see more of it. It's very, it's harder to see on the white, but where the brown is, you can see it better. Um, I don't know, but I feel like it has something to do with my wax resist. Like, I mean, I'm wiping the piece down before firing it. So there shouldn't be any underglaze, glaze, like, covering the wax resist. Um, and maybe even sometimes I wipe off, like, maybe even, like, further above where the resist sits. I don't know. Um, let me know if you have any ideas. Sorry, this is really hard to kind of get, like, in focus. Um... <sighs> But I mean, overall, the general look looks, it's pretty cute. I really like the colors. Um, and I like this more detailed cow print versus the 
um, more blobby one that I did for the pink boot. So I'm kind of leaning towards this slightly more detailed style, maybe for other cowboy boots that we do. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got our little black bunny uh, trinket dish. This one, I don't think I really looked at the sides. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really see anything. Um, we have a little bit of bubbling by the eyes and a little bubble by the nose. Um, if I can, I think if you like look at how the glare kind of distorts, you can kind of see it. Um, this is not too bad. And then the black coverage is very like, it's very opaque and nice looking. So pretty happy with this. I mean, I could be better in terms of it not bubbling. I don't really know why it does that. Maybe it's because I go back and forth with too many layers trying to fix it. I don't know. <clears throat> and then we've got our little black Dutch bunny. Um, a bit... Um, less perfect than the last one this one's eye is like even worse with the bubbling like you can actually feel it um and then we have a little a few little black bits over here that aren't quite as covered as i'd like them to be i'd like it to be a little bit more white but i mean overall this is a little cutie um oh and then he did stick to the kiln shelf so there's a little bit of kiln shelf there. It's so thin. Um, I don't think it does much to make it like sit wonky. Um, but yeah, poor little guy had a few issues. <laughs> um, but I I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I would like it to be perfect, but <clears throat> sometimes you never know what's gonna happen. Or, I don't know. There's always, always issues coming up. And I have not been doing ceramics for, like, a super long time. So, it's just kind of, you know, it's just kind of what happens. Um, so, I've got three identical um, little air plant dishes here. Um, these ones have the same glaze on them. Um, and... These are kind of like, the like dish portion of it was just pinched. And then I added little legs to it. We made this on the stream, if you want to check that out. Um, probably a few weeks back. I don't know how long ago. But they just have like a very slightly irregular shape to them. But they're about the same size. That's why I glazed these with the same colors. Um, so then I'll be able to put them like in the same listing and just show pictures of each of them. But I love this glaze, this is really pretty. Um, this is, it's called Blizzard Blue. I'm pretty sure this is a Georgie's glaze. Um, please no. Um, I don't know for sure, but I get the suspicion that sometimes the Georgie's glazes have some more issues with them, such as, uh, the issue that we mentioned earlier. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that also that other glaze is also very hard to apply. It takes a really long time to do by brush. Um, and this one went on super thick. I was like, not sure how thick to apply this. I think I might have, I think I might have just done two coats. I, I can't remember. But, um, just so you know, be a little bit warned um, that Georgies might have issues with their glazes sometimes. I don't know. Um, I think half the time it's like the consistency or something of the glaze and like actually applying it. <sighs> um, where I have some issues. Um, but this is really pretty. You've got really nice like deep blue sky like different kind of like sky blues and then I feel like there's like optically mixing with the cream 
uh, color of the the stoneware that kind of gives it like maybe like a purple tinge but it is so pretty um I really like it I do kind of wish we went a little bit further down the sides um I really well this one looks a little bit more consistent but this one just kind of I don't know <laughs> um yeah I kind of wish I went a little further down um but yeah little tripods for like uh air plants or um or it could be like a little ring dish too cute little ring dish um and i'm pretty sure that is it <clears throat> pretty sure that's it for our kiln reveal was there anything else that really was not a lot i think that's it i'm pretty sure that's it um, other than the one that I already shipped and cannot show you. But stay tuned. Um, on Friday, I'll be doing another kiln reveal. Um, we've got turtles, chicken dishes, rabbit dishes. I think there's, yeah, I think there's rabbit dish, cat dishes. Um... That's all I can think of right now. But that's what we're going to be um, showing on Friday because on Thursday, I'm going to have to cancel the stream. Um, I'm going into the office for Halloween. <sighs> okay. But let's get going and work on some underglazing. Oh, let me show you what I actually did finish. <laughs> I really did not finish many. We've got... <laughs> two finished um like peppermints um I need to like wipe the um the glaze off of the wax these ones where you don't see the wax that's my purple one it really fades quite a bit <sighs> um and then we got some standard candy canes um and then once I got my, my glaze batch back, I was like, maybe there's an issue with my wax. So I've applied my orange wax to them. Um, I'll show you. So purple wax is wax on. Uh, it stays on the piece when you put it through the firing. Wax off is the orange one. And this one's for more decorative purposes. And before you fire it, you're going to be like rubbing it off that that's kind of like the whole point of it is that um you know you're like layering or something and you're wiping off so that you can like i don't know <laughs> do some design thing with it um so i'm kind of thinking like i really do not want that curling issue to happen on these because like this is how it's going to look basically like these are supposed to kind of look like cookies like sugar cookies that someone decorated um so i don't want the edge to have glaze on it um, or like i don't want it to have any color there so you can see like i avoided that area with the um with the wax and if we have that like curling issue it's gonna be visible like it's just front and center <laughs> with that issue and um i'm not really digging that <laughs> so um i've pivoted for a bunch of them but i did apply it to a few we've got a little snowflake um, one that has the other wax on it and I've got um, that comes in a pair and then this one um, as well I'm doing it like a very light pink Christmas tree um, <clears throat> okay so let's get working on these I think I don't know I was kind of thinking maybe let me push some of these around um, just jumping all over the place with these. Um, grab our pink underglaze. 
Uh, where are my brushes? Okay. So, we've got some different things going on here. Um... Um, I'm gonna call this pink one the old design. This one, I did the pink, I did all the pink layers, and then I'm coming in, yeah, and then I'm coming in with the white layers separately. Um, for these ones that I have sitting out here with the, um, with the pencil marks on them, these have all been just like fully underglazed with white with all their layers and then we're going to go in with the pink i don't know if this is going to be a problem <laughs> hopefully it's not a problem to put um pencil on top like in between like underglazed layers i'm really hoping that's not going to be a problem uh, but i don't actually know um so yeah <clears throat> so i'm just going to be um, just grabbing my pink and we're going to fill this in and just, I don't know, we're just going to be working through these and see how many we can get done with the time left on the stream. And then, um, of course, kind of, I'm trying to get these done as soon as possible. I'm definitely going to be working on them like tonight. Um, and then, I don't know, we'll just, we'll just see where we are tomorrow. I have, let's see. Okay, so one of them broke when I brought it to the studio to be bisked. So, I'm guessing, I think we have, <clears throat> um... I think there are 47. <laughs> um, I'm sort of guessing. Or maybe there's, I don't know. There were supposed to be 12 of each design, but then we had some, a few issues. Um, I think it's mostly the candy canes that, um, <laughs> <laughs> that broke. <laughs> we have a few issues with the candy canes. Um, <clears throat> but I think the other ones might have 12 each for the trees, just like the round ones and then these candies. Um... I'm really liking the peppermint look, so I'm planning on doing four of the pink peppermints, four of the red. Um, what else was I thinking? Um, we have those two pink ones with the swirl. And... I think I, I wanted to do some other color with the swirl. Like, it's just kind of like a generic, like, candy. Um, I don't know, maybe, like, purple or something. Um, yeah. And then that should be 12. <clears throat> I do not have a ton of <laughs> ideas for definitely not the round ones I was kind of thinking like maybe a cute little wreath for one of those one of the just like generic round ones I mean there are a lot of things I could do with those so I don't know I have to kind of like focus in and <laughs> make a decision <laughs> with the inspiration that I got um, and then the trees, um, I feel like I could do a few things with the trees. Um, like maybe some are just like generic, like, 
you know, some tree in the woods with some snow on it or something, um, you know, not specifically like Christmas. Um, <clears throat> I personally celebrate Christmas. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of like, I don't know. I'm kind of batting around the idea. Maybe I should do like, maybe like a Hanukkah thing. Um, I don't know if that's weird. Cause I'm not like, uh, I have like literally kind of no idea. <laughs> like, about like what goes on for Hanukkah um I don't know is that just too um like I don't know what the phrase would be like out of my lane <laughs> you know people would be like get in your own lane <laughs> or something or I don't know like I kind of I kind of feel for these people though because it's like you know if you go to you know, you're just at some big box store. <clears throat> like, there is not a lot there for, you know, for the people that want to celebrate Hanukkah. So I kind of feel for these people. Like, you know, like, that kind of sucks. <laughs> like, like, I mean, I know I'm really disappointed when, you know, I'm looking for, like, some holiday decorations, and they just don't have, like, enough of what I'm looking for. Um, you know, maybe that is, uh, for example, with, like, Christmas. I am loving, um, like, Michael's is putting on a very candy, sweet-centered Christmas. Lots of things have sprinkles on them. They're super colorful and cheery, but like when I went to Target yesterday, they don't have a ton of Christmas things yet because Halloween's around the corner, but they're, you know, they have that like deep, deep, moody, earthy, green, like dark maroon, burgundy reds on um, things. Very like traditional Christmas. Um, I don't really know, like, what you would call it, like, I don't know, the color palette is very, like, dark, and, like, kind of more jewel-toned-ish, and I'm, like, kind of low-key disappointed, you know, because I was like, oh, shoot, like, <laughs> I thought everybody was, like, on the, um, you know, like, on the train with, like, candy, colorful things um because I feel like I saw some stuff kind of like that at um home goods maybe I mean they really they have a lot of things I don't know <laughs> they have a lot of like quite a variety but I'm just kind of like saying like I always I kind of get this point when I'm not really seeing what I'm looking for so I don't know maybe that is is that just like controversial um, to be, like, making art for, like, a holiday that I don't know, like, a ton about. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of, like, coming from that perspective that I kind of feel bad that these people don't have, like, as much, like, you know, decorations and stuff to, like, celebrate with. Um... <clears throat> And I don't know, I think it's really fun when you can, like, just, like, go all out and, I mean, I don't really have a ton of, like, ton of ton of decorations or anything. But, like, it's kind of fun when you can change things up in your house and, um, you know, have new decorations out and it really gives you, it kind of puts you in that, like holiday mood um I think I don't know there's something kind of fun about that I think um I don't know <laughs> I don't know but I'm kind of thinking maybe um maybe I'll 
look into some different things. I don't, I don't really know a whole lot about like, <laughs> like what would be like motifs and stuff that people would want to use as like decorations. I don't know. I'll have to kind of maybe look, but I'm kind of thinking maybe a few things. Okay, so we've got, we, we want to do one more pink and then we're going to do red for the other ones. Also, another question. Um, I'm like, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier um, when we were trimming the ornaments, but I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure if candy canes are like religious. I don't celebrate uh, Christmas in a religious sense. Like, with Jesus and like, oh, it's Jesus's birthday. Um, like I'm not really like that religious. Um, totally cool if you are, but I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of wondering like, are candy canes religious? Cause I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I. I got some thing from like um one of my family members last year is like candy canes and it said like I don't know saying something about Jesus and I'm like I don't know I mean I definitely like we've always you know gotten candy canes to like keep in the house to snack on and like put put on the tree and stuff because it's cute um but I feel like I don't know I'm not really sure um I asked Jason and he's not sure either <laughs> um but I'm definitely like I mean candy canes are so like I don't know that and just like I mean you like peppermint in general that's kind of what I that's kind of like how I see them I see them like basically the same as like peppermint although I'm like not really sure if there are like I don't know if that's like a religious thing or not <laughs> um so I just want to like note that I'm not sure but like I don't know I'm like I'm loving that like trend right now, at least that Michaels is showing with like all the candy related decorations, you know, like gingerbread houses, um, maybe like garlands with like, uh, what are those called? Like gumdrops and stuff and like everything has sprinkles on it and <sighs> Um, I don't know, lots of like random candy, those like ribbon candies that, you know, those like old fashioned ribbon candies and like, um, <clears throat> I don't know. What else is kind of like winter candy? I don't know. <laughs> um, but like, I don't know. I just feel like candy canes like are just kind of like part of that party um, and I hope that, um, I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm, my goal, like, just generally is not to make anything too religious. Really? I mean... <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's kind of like complicated because like, I don't know. I guess people think like, I don't know. People think like Christmas trees are like religious or something. I don't know. There are a lot of people that celebrate Christmas that aren't, you know, religious. Um, so I don't know. I, it's kind of a weird 
um, area to be in. Um, but like, generally with any of my Christmas stuff, I just kind of want it to be like, um, I don't know. It's just kind of stuff that I've had, like, in our house, like, for the holidays. And, um, I don't know. If I add any, um, obviously if I add any Hanukkah stuff, I mean, that's kind of like, does anybody do that? Does anybody do that same kind of thing with Hanukkah? Like they're celebrating it, but like not in a religious sense. I don't know. I really, <laughs> this has brought up a lot of questions. Um, that I'm like not really sure about, um, but I hope I'm not offending anybody. I'm just like, <laughs> and it's like, I just want to like make some fun ornaments that people can like, decorate their house with um hopefully nothing is like too like I don't know controversial I don't know I'm <laughs> um but I don't know I'm just I'm just going with it um and I guess we'll just kind of see how things go <sighs> Oh yeah, we have to do those like detailed lines too for the peppermints. I kind of forgot because I'm just lathering on <laughs> these larger shapes. So while I was not streaming last week, I went to Georgie's and got some supplies. Um, I don't know what I got. Uh, most, I didn't really get anything super new. Um, few underglazes to try out um they didn't have the um those underglaze sprays yet that amico has uh, but i did look <clears throat> i'm kind of like i don't know like how much i would use it but i feel like it's it sounds pretty interesting and maybe it could be like a fun thing to have on hand um, but yeah, they have these like spray cans with underglaze in them. Um, <clears throat> uh, what else was I looking for? Um, what do they call them? Amico has a new line. Uh, they're called phase glazes. Um, Georgie's did not have any of those, but I looked, um, they're a little, they're usually a little late to getting things. Um, so I'm just gonna keep my eye out. Um, but the phase glazes are like, I think the main thing is that they're kind of meant to, um, be combined with other glazes and they just kind of like, have this really nice effect when you, you know, com when you put them like on top of other glazes. I think it's like mostly on top. Um, it just kind of, I don't know, it like breaks apart kind of, and I don't know, just kind of adds this like kind of cool effect. It's not like anything crazy. Like I've seen, there's this one glaze that I used all the time um, in college that 
oh gosh, I always put it on top of like my pieces. It was kind of like yellowish, but like very slightly yellow. Um, sometimes it kind of looked white and I would put that on white glazes and black and it just like, sometimes it sort of had this yellowish gold kind of look to it and it was just beautiful. Um, if you want to see any of those, I have them on my Instagram. It's just that you have to go back like pretty far to like find any of them. But um, uh, most of my pieces that I made in Nebraska are, um, they're like black or white. So they definitely stand out. <laughs> Um, compared to like all the really colorful things that I make right now. Um, but that's just like what they happen to have. Um, I don't know. I just don't really, all the colored glazes that we had available for class were, um, they're very rustic like, you know, like very deep, like burgundies or like maroon and, uh, I don't know. I don't even know what other colors there were. Um. <laughs> I wasn't a huge fan of them. I literally don't even know what else there was. I don't know. Maybe like orange or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I, I really wanted like, you know, very saturated, like light colors, like, you know, like pinks and, um, and stuff. I love teal, um, or, um, purples I know they're not really it's not super common to find glazes in these colors not as common as it is for like to find red glazes you know um but that's why I loved I love that combination um on that white glaze or the black one okay so we've got some nice coats here let me, um, let me grab another brush. We can do that detailed work, I think. But yeah, the phase glazes are, I don't know, like, <laughs> all of the, like, posts and stuff that I've seen Amico make for them are, like, just the single glaze. <laughs> And they do kind of like, just at, like by themselves, they do kind of like break up and have that kind of like, I don't really know how to describe it. It's sort of like mottled, I guess, or spotty sort of in a way. You just have to kind of look at it, like <laughs> go look at their Instagram. Um, but they're, they haven't really posted many examples of what it looks you know like combined with other glazes so I'm like <laughs> I don't really know exactly what it's gonna look like I'm just kind of thinking that's what it looks like because it sort of reminds me of that one glaze I used to use um but I don't know like in reality <laughs> and um awesome note if you didn't know Amico typically um I think they're a little I don't think they're ready to put it on their website just yet but on their website you can go to um I don't know what section it is but they have like a place on their website where they show um their glaze combinations and it is so cool it's so nice to be able to see like what they look like on different glazes and there's a filter in there so you can filter it by like the celadons or their potter's choice or like I don't know <laughs> I don't know what a, they have the cosmos <clears throat> and stuff I don't think the cosmos are on there yet um, I don't think anything that was released this year is on there quite yet, but I, you know, after a while, I think they're going to like be adding those probably. Um, but it's really cool to, 
maybe get an idea of what it's going to look like. Um, obviously, the best choice is to, you know, make your own test tiles because it's going to look, it could look a bit different on your clay body versus what they use, that whole spiel. Um, <clears throat> and also, like, depending on, like, how thick you apply it, it can also change. Uh, but I, I don't know, I feel like it's kind of cool to at least, like, have some kind of reference of what it might look like. Because otherwise, like... I think you would be like completely like directionless. You would just be completely randomly buying <laughs> like their glazes and then just being like, okay, <laughs> how does this look? Um, which isn't, you know, I don't think people really like to do that. Um, but the thing is like, if you have a glaze that is, um, I don't know, maybe it's really ugly on its own. If you like combine it with other glazes, I don't know, like maybe it's on the top or it's on the bottom coat, whatever. Like maybe it looks really cool with other glazes. Um, and that's kind of more of what I'm talking about. Um, I think that's like the fun part. <laughs> is like seeing what you get when you combine your different glazes. Um, <clears throat> but um, it's kind of cool to at least maybe have a reference of how it reacts and what it looks like. So that is like a really great resource. Um, to my knowledge, I don't think any of the other glaze uh, producers do that. Um, but another great tip is that you can, um, a lot of the major glaze companies have a, like a group on Facebook. Um, I think they're just run by random people. They're not run by people at the, you know, that make the glazes or anything. Um, so, for example, I'm in, like, the Amico uh, Facebook group. I don't know what it's called. Something about Amico. <laughs> um, and there, people will also post um, pictures of their glaze combinations. They'll be like, oh, dang, you know, this glaze and this glaze look really cool when you do this. You know, you fire it to this cone and whatever. They'll give you, like, all the details um, that you need to, like, do it yourself. Um, and lots of people do that. Lots of people are very happy to post, um, you know, what glazes they use to get that uh, special combination, which is pretty cool. Um, and then another thing that I do on there is you can search in that group like keywords like maybe you're wondering what this you know what the new glazes looks like and people are like you know all these people they they jump on it they get those glazes as soon as they can so if you're wondering what like one of the new amico cosmos looks like someone in that group might have posted a picture of what it looks like um, you know, on like red clay or something, or I don't know. <laughs> um, but you can search in there um, by the glaze name and see if anybody has any pictures showing it. Um, or people will ask. Um, they'll be like, hey, has anybody used this in combination with any other glazes? Just wondering what it looks like. Um, and then people will, you know, uh, post some photos if they have any. Um, but I think it's a really great resource to check out. Um, or if you are having any very odd issues with your glaze, um, <clears throat> it can be really great too. 
because chances are somebody in that group has probably used it. Um, you know, maybe it's not, I don't know, turning out in the color that you want it to be. And then someone might answer and be like, oh, you have to apply it really thick or something. Um, stuff like that. Um, people on there are really happy to help out if they, if they can, you know? Um, I know I talk about this quite a bit, but like such a great resource and like everybody needs to know about this. <laughs> um, another one is Reddit. Reddit has, um, they have both subreddits for pottery and ceramics. Pretty sure they're basically the same. Um, <laughs> so I don't know, I'll just go on there randomly. Um, but you can ask them questions too. Um, and a lot of people are pretty eager to help. Um, obviously, if you're asking something super random and it's unlikely many people know about it, you might not get an answer. <laughs> But um, the things that, you know, really common, easy questions always get, like, tons of replies. Um, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask uh, questions on there. Maybe share a photo of something you're troubleshooting um, can help, too. Um, super great. Um, yeah. What else? I was talking about... <laughs> I completely just... <laughs> went on this entire rant. <laughs> um, anyway, we're talking about my trip to Georgie's. Um, I bought some underglaze. I didn't get any of the new things. Um, just kind of stocked up on the colors that I'm using a lot right here. So that red, this pink, um, some more white, just you know, all the basics. Um, bought a few bats and, oh shoot, yeah. Um, I don't know why, but Georgie's is like discontinuing a lot of their glazes right now. Um, like there's like quite a few. Um, I don't know why. But there's this one that I use. It's called Pacific Blue. Um, I like that one. I, like, I use it a bit. Like, a fair, I mean, you know, a lot of my things are, like, different combinations. But that is one that I do kind of want to continue to use. <clears throat> um... But yeah, they're discontinuing it and I bought a few bottles. I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking maybe I should have gotten some more. They're only $12 for a pint and that's not that bad. I mean, anybody who buys their glazes in bulk is probably like, that's a ripoff. <laughs> but I usually buy them by the pint. Um, so that's just me. I don't have like a ton of room here to be <laughs> to be like holding like gallons and gallons of glaze in my apartment it's just not my situation right now <laughs> um, but I'm like I don't know I actually got in a few more I have three bottles like I think I bought two, but I had one just sitting here. So, I don't know. Maybe I should have got more. <sighs> Sometimes I go a little too crazy with how many things I buy. So, I don't know. Don't want to be, like, going too crazy. But they are discontinuing it. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to think on it. Um... That was the only one that I noticed um, as one that I use, but maybe you want to, do they ship? I don't even know. <laughs> maybe they don't ship, 
Wait, but I think they have, I think they sell glazes to, like, other stores. Um, I, I don't know. I've seen them somewhere. Um, sometimes I'll check out, I think it's called, like, the Big Ceramic Store. Um, or, like, Bailey's Ceramics. Um, I think one or both of those sell Georgie's things. Um, so be on the lookout. Um, the ones that I got were like, uh, either 40 or 50% off. Um, yeah, I don't know what is going on over there. I hope things aren't too bad. I don't know what is going on, but, um, I know they closed their Eugene store. In Eugene, Oregon, they closed that one. Um, I don't know how many stores they have. I knew about those two. Maybe it's just the two. Um, but I hope things are okay. Um, What else? What else? Um, oh yeah, I did mention how I needed to get some straps for my slip, uh, my slip mold. I got those, and guess what? I did some slip casting this weekend, which was really fun. <laughs> um, really disappointing, but really fun, and I'm just like. I don't know. I'm kind of obsessed. Um, let me grab what I got. Um, I scrapped like, if you saw my, one of my earlier videos, I was showing the molds that I ordered online. Um, one of them are like these like babies. They're, they're called snow babies. And they're like in these little outfits, like, I don't know, like they're, in snow or something or Sherpa uh, outfits, they like did not work. Like it was, it was really bad. There are a lot of holes. Um, so I'm gonna have to do, redo that. Um, I did my basket and it didn't turn out super great. The two times I cast it. So I scrapped that and then I made a bunny and a duck. And they're supposed to go on top of the basket. They're like little, um, con like tiny containers. So let me just grab that real quick. <clears throat> I don't know how this bunny is doing. I've, okay, I've literally never done slip casting before. So... You know, I am not anybody to be looking towards for information on this. <laughs> um, my bunny has a few issues. So here's the duck. And the, the duck is like the first one I cast and it turned out the best. Um, and then this is going to be a little lid on top of a basket. And then here we've got the inside like a nice I feel like this is a good thickness um for it but yeah this little ducky I don't know why but the rabbit is like a ton bigger is that because this is more a little bit more dry like it's not even bone dry yet <laughs> I don't know um but the bunny has a crack down here some cracks sort of around the ears. I don't know if that's something I can fix. And then we've got some weird lines. <laughs> I don't know what is going on there. But yeah, that this is how it turns out. I'm going to have to cut off this excess. I'm pretty sure that's what you're supposed to do. I feel like I need the basket. <laughs> <laughs> to like see like how it's supposed to look I feel it I don't know it is a lid though I don't know I literally don't know um but I'm really excited this is really fun and it's generally 
pretty quick to do. Um, I bought a bucket of slip at Georgie's. Side note, slip is typically just like clay with like a lot of water in it that makes it um, <clears throat> liquid. That's the typical, you know, spiel about slip. But if you're slip casting, it needs to have um, one or more other additional ingredients added to it. Um, I don't know off the top of my head right now, but it has to do with slip casting um, and allowing it to do that. Um, so you have to kind of like either add stuff to your clay if you want to make it into a slip casting slip, um, or you can buy some from the store. Um, luckily, I buy my clay from Georgie's. They had a version of what I already use um, available for the slip. So that's what I bought. <sighs> but I was looking online about, like I was trimming these and stuff, and you don't want to put it back in your reclaim. People specifically noted it would be very bad for wheel throwing. Um, I don't know. Um, I literally don't know a lot. <laughs> so I'm not really the person to be looking towards, but uh, I don't know what it would do if you just put it back into your regular clay and made other things with it. Um, I don't know if you would have any issues there, uh, but people specifically said you would have issues with wheel throwing, um, just from a Google search. Um, but yeah, um, I am really excited to do that, and I don't know if I would slip cast on the stream, um... I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> oh, geez, I just got a bunch of clay on this. Um, but it's not too bad. I have my, um, my molds. I have little rubber bands and stuff for them. Um, I just need to, like, add water to my slip. Like, add a bit more water to it. Mix it. Um, oh, I'll show you my drill that I have. Um, I went to the hardware store. Literally knowing like nothing, <laughs> I don't know anything about hardware things, but I found this thing and I was like, that looks like it would go in a drill. And this is what I use. So regular drill. And then it has this paddle on it. So great for mixing. This will be great for mixing clay for like the slip, but also really great for like um, mixing larger quantities of clays. <clears throat> People say that if you are just, um, shoot, we're at time. People say if you have a very small quantity of glaze that you're using, like a pint, you don't need to thoroughly mix it. Um, but if you have something larger, like a gallon, you should be mixing it with some sort of like drill with a paddle on it. Um, there are all kinds of different things out there. Um, I also have like, I think it's called an immersion blender or maybe that's not it. It's, it's like a handheld blender that you would use for cooking. Um, <clears throat> I also have one of those, uh, I think it's a little bit more for my underglaze, maybe. But, um, yeah, when I was in the studio uh, in college, we had, a, like, a really huge, like, drill that we would use for, like, the, like, I don't know. the It was, like, a garbage bin full of glaze. So, like, the more glaze you have, the bigger the drill you should probably have. So there are different things you can use. But yeah, just want to show that real quick. Okay, we're so over time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just going to be working on these as much as I can um, tonight. And then we'll probably be underglazing some more tomorrow. Um, if anything, I will definitely need to glaze some of these. I don't know if that is on the table for tomorrow. But yeah. <laughs>
Well, thank you so much for joining. I hope this was informational um, for any of you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, about anything, and I will let you know how confident I am about that answer. <laughs> I've only been doing ceramics on my own for like two years. So I know some things, but not like definitely not everything. Um, but I'm happy to maybe point you in the right direction if I can. Um, but yeah, for anybody watching on Twitch, be sure to, uh, follow along so you know when I come on for streams. Uh, all the streams are uploaded to YouTube at Callie and Co. There you can find a whole live stream playlist, a few ceramic tutorials, and some other fun art-related videos. If you want to check that out, be sure to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment. Uh, and if you guys want to check out my Instagram, that would be awesome. Um, <clears throat> my Instagram is my main platform. So if you want to hear about like shop updates, the new things that I'm making, that is like a great place to hear about that. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Well, I hope you have a great day. Bye.